Hello and welcome, children. My name is Sarah and I do things. And today, welcome to class. We're gonna look at lip scents. All right, I am not a makeup artist or a makeup scientist or a scientist, really. I just say pretty, but I like makeup and I constantly look at lip scents. Um, reviews, advertisements, it's everywhere. It can't escape. It's like pooping. You just can't get rid of it. And as somebody who does not wear lip scents, has never worn lip scents, will never wear lip scents, and does not like to support MLMs, despite the fact that I have fallen into the pattern of MLMs with uh, Mary Kay, but that's because if you take out the price point, their skincare's not bad. It's just that it's way too overpriced. Also, MLMs suck. And Avon, because, you know, in the 90s, we didn't figure that Avon was a terrible business practice. Your girlfriend down the street sold you some makeup and it was cheaper because it was the 90s and your mom was like, hey, you want me to get you a lipstick? And you were like, hell yeah. So like, I'm, I'm experienced in having accidentally participated in MLMs. I've never sold it, but lip sense is not one because I, me, myself, and I have a uh, a dry mouth hole chronically and so I was like burning alcohol does not sound like my cup of tea I'm not gonna do it but I see all these reviews about it burning and then the lip sense salesperson comes back and says it's like clearing out the wax and it's wax for your blah, 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 opinions I'm gonna go at it from science we're just gonna go ahead and share my screen to make this easier because I'm lazy because it's 22 20 minutes a day. I did ourselves a favor and made a beautiful little sheet on LibreOffice comparing the ingredients of three lipsticks. Uh, I have not tried the NYX Shine Loud lip color. I see it. It looks really similar to the concept of lip sense, but I have not myself bought it. Um, we're not going to talk about Jeffree Star, but I have tried his lipstick. And say what you will about the man, the liquid lip paint man. But I tried to get them all in nude-based colors that were pretty similar colored, so we didn't have to focus on anything. Um, and just those colors, because I wasn't going through the whole catalog of any of those. That is crazy. So I have these two to compare. One that I've tried. One brand that I usually dress pretty well. I'm wearing Nyx on my lips right now. It's a liquid suede. Should we do the lip sense? It's not as impressive if I don't have these weird globby shine lips. And I also uh, did myself a unique inspired eye look, only better because I know how to use a blending brush. Sort of. Again, I'm not a makeup artist. I just really appreciate it. And um, I do it the way I want to. So don't come for me. But we also, because I've seen comparisons of putting lip scents is like putting a nail polish on your lips. Or hand sanitizer with pigment. So I also grabbed... Uh, Purell Advanced Instant Hand Sanitizer and the Essie Nail Polish Bear With Me. And to add a little bit, because your butt skin and your lip skin are made of the same skin cells, I was like, hmm, what's in my butt wipes? So I got the in ingredients and I'm just like, what do I put on my butt? It's the same skin, why not figure it out? Um, 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 of my 42 Signature Care Shaw's Brand Wipes. Fancy. So we're gonna do a little compare and contrast, and I pulled up some of the um, highlight weird ingredients that are a little bit higher on the uh, scale um, in all of them, all three of these, not the other stuff because I have it written down, but we're not gonna pull it up. So a disclaimer is that some reviews claim that that lip sense has propylene glycol um 
I did not look through all of them. I looked through some of them and their ingredients, depending on what kind of gloss and what color gloss and what color of the pig. Blah, 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 blah. There's too much does change. I did not find propylene glycol in my search, but there were way too many. I was going to spend like 12 hours digging through each one. And some of them don't even have ingredients listed on the website. Shady. Just going to point that out. Mm. <laughs> But I did grab all of these ingredients for each of these colors directly off of their websites. And then the butt wipes from the back of the thing. <laughs> so I went into Lip Sense first. We all know it starts with denatured alcohol. And going off of the myth that I can't prove or deny that its ingredient lists start with the most and end with the least. Um, that's a lot of alcohol. So our first guy's alcohol, denatured alcohol, which is, you know, I'm going off of EWG. I could do more, but I'm really lazy, so don't come for me again. Um, it's not that bad by itself. Like, overall, with its toxicity and its allergic reaction, everybody can have an allergic reaction to pretty much anything. So, obviously, if you have an allergy to denatured alcohol, it, it says it on there. You wouldn't use it. But... There's the, the idea that, like, everybody can be a little bit allergic to everything, even natural things. It's true. I can't have lavender. That's natural. Take that to Tara. We're just going for all the MLMs. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna die. Um, acrylates and octylacrylamide copolymer. I have my little notes of the Denatured alcohol is used for viscosity control and solvent. Our copolymer is a film forming because obviously you want that color to form a film and to be on your lips and not just slide around like water with some color. Uh, or that crazy thing we used to do where we melted crayons and assumed that would make a good lipstick. I did it. It's no. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, the third one is I saw stereal alcohol that is another alcohol, again, for viscosity control and also skin conditioning. So getting the skin nice and prepped and chill for it. Um, and then we have silica. Silica is our first on the list of, obviously, we're aware that it's a thing. Um, it's It's got that risk of persistence and bioaccumulation it sticks up things and it's fine sand and silica uh finely ground sand is used for opac opacifying and anti-caking and when it's in controlled amounts it's not too bad there are instances of silica sand being so fine that depending on how you work with it it can cause lung issues and respiratory issues but i don't believe in lipstick it's an issue and as you can see silica i've got highlighted because it pretty much comes in most of these it is not in the jeffree star um formula but that's fine you know not everything is everybody's different but silica is pretty common in a lot of different makeup products and lipsticks um and in fact it is also in Bear with me nail polish. So like, it ain't that scary. However, I will say in lip sense, it is the highest out of all, what, three of the things that have it on this list. And so like, that's, that's a lot more silica than the others. But you know, we don't know. Uh, PPG 20 methyl glucose ether woof is in the alcohol family that's all i wrote so good job me <laughs> oops and it's also for skin conditioning so so far our first five ingredients three of them are in the alcohol family and one is silica so perfume which is a highly allergen based issue is that it you can really like get irritated by perfumed things um and you can see that pretty much all of these have a little bit of fragrance oh does jeffrey not again wow amazing 
I'm surprised. But most of these have some fragrance. And I also did not highlight anything that also appears in the gloss again, just because we'll get to it. Um, it's in the NYX one. It's in Lip Sense. It's in uh, sanitizer and butt wipes and all that. I don't believe it is in our nail polish, which makes sense to me because, like, our nail polishes always smell so incredibly acetate and alcoholic. So, like, that makes sense. But, so I'm not going to judge them for using perfume. I am one of those people who gets a little irritated with a lot of perfume, but a little perfume is not bad. However, I'm going to judge them that three of their first five ingredients are in the alcohol family. So to cover up that alcohol smell, their sixth ingredient way up there has to be perfume. Bruh, it still smells like vodka from the reviews. So like you didn't do a great job anyway, but that's a lot of perfume. Like you see... That it is the second to last thing in the uh, Shine Loud lip color before benzyl alcohol and before we get into the May Contains, which we'll get to in a minute because, like, I have other thoughts on those. But it's just, it's so far up and the rest of them are just like, yeah, there's a little scent in here. We have a hydroxypropyl cellulose, like I said, I'm not a scientist, uh, which is an alcohol cellulose com combo. Uh, it's a binder, it's a film former, it does viscosity controlling. Again, this is the fourth alcohol. We're on seven. We get butylene glycol, another alcohol for solvent and conditioning. Aqua, water. Uh, the Isodonus japonicus leaf and stock extract. Now we're getting to the natural extracts. And wouldn't you know, the Japanese extract is mostly for conditioning your skin and fragrance. Bruh. Pick better. Uh, and then we get into St. John's Wort, which is actually really good. We love St. John's Wort. It is soothing. It's an astringent. It's conditioning. It protects your skin a lot, which is great, because uh, we need that after all that goddamn alcohol that is so far up the list. The tree peony extract, which is also a skin protecting extract, so like I'm eating my words for a minute, but then we get into linden extract. The linden is conditioning and refreshing and soothing and also smells good, and then we have citronellol and limonene, which are, uh, ignore this should be it has nothing to do with this. Um, res just restriction-based, mostly for allergies. A lot of the things that are high on the list, you'll notice, are for allergies. Which, these are more common allergies, which is why they are higher on it. Because, like, for instance, citronellol is um, rose geranium and lemongrass. And I know plenty of people who have allergies. Al allergic oh my god I can't speak reactions to rose and geranium not so much lemongrass but you know uh this is mostly a fragrance ingredient as is limonene which is a citrus based one also in this little listy guy uh for instance my mother is allergic to oranges so sometimes she can't have limonene because it's citrus derived and some brands of it will have a little more orange based than others. So, you know, those are at your own risk in any brand. Um, I'm honestly surprised that limonene and citronella didn't make it into any of the other ones because there are so many face creams and stuff that I have gotten that have limonene and citronella. But they are far down, so it's not a lot of it. So like, if you have to have a lot to get it to irritate, like fragrance or something, or even St. John's Wort and Tree Peony and Linden, um, it's pretty okay. So, the thing with the alcohol is that they're like, oh yeah, it's exfoliating all of the leftover wax. Um, alcohol doesn't work as an exfoliant, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think that's how that works. Also, wax buildup is a lie. I clean off my lips like all the time because of how dry they are. 
I don't have any wax buildup. It comes off. If you clean your lips right, wax will not, like, that. It, what is this science? I don't know. I realized I'm, I'm looking at, like, me in the video the whole time and not at the camera. Um, so you're welcome. You get to look at me looking at my adorable face. I'm not vain, I promise. Oops. But anyway, we're moving on. Uh, into the May contains. So, May contains are pretty much all colorant based things. They are the red dyes and the tin oxides and the iron oxides and titanium dioxide and mica and stuff like that. And that's not a big deal. Obviously, we are all aware of um, dyes having allergy issues and irritation issues and staining issues and all of that. Um, so, and you'll see all three of these as well as the nail polish all have plenty of dye stuff. What gets me a little, little bit like, yes, you know what, is uh, the fact that in every other listing on here, and every listing I've pretty much ever looked at, they will have the CI number and also the name of that dye. So for instance, um, a lake is a metal-based color, colorant. And if it's not a lake, it is a um, tar-based, and there's one other thing, um, colorant. So if you are allergic to metal colorants, it's really important to see that lake. If you're allergic to non-metal colorants, it's kind of important. And you might not know, but it's, it's that thing of we have learned the names of them and maybe not in depth so that we know it's like metal versus tar, blah, 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 blah. but we have learned the names of them. So it just really kind of off puts me that they didn't include any names. They just include the numbers. So it's like, oh, what's that number? If you're not feeling like looking it up, you don't know what color it's in. You know, there's colorants in there, but you don't know what they are. And like, I, I've known people who have certain colorant allergies and so they need to look at it and see like okay which one does this have versus which does this have I can't have this because it has this color in it so like I'm not saying they're evil for using colorants because like they all do but I'm saying it's kind of shady that you're not including the names of the colors especially with lakes and not lake based colors um because they're they're made from different color bases and if someone needs to know that they're gonna look up the number and be like okay but which one is it because they are under the same number a lot of the times from what I looked up so like I'm just saying it's a little bit shady maybe include which ones are there unless you don't know which is also double as shady incredibly irresponsible so we're gonna move into the gloss we start with phenyl dimethicone which is a silicone polymer for skin conditioning nothing huge um the Oh God, cyclopentasiloxane. Wait a minute. Excuse that. <laughs> um, is a little bit less fun. Most of these really are like just uh, they accumulate on you. Sometimes they have a little toxicity, depending on the organ stuff. Um, and a lot of it is allergy based and immunotoxicity based. So allergy based, even though allergies are a serious thing, if you have mild allergies, it's not as like, we all know that a lot of allergies in the world exist. So it's one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, it's not that shocking. It kind of sucks that it's so high up on the gloss where it works as a skin conditioning and solvent. And as we go into the next ones, you're going to notice that like a lot of these have skin conditioning and solvent stuff that do not sit as high in that danger zone. Uh, then we have a clay-based thickener that is a suspending agent, which is dystyrdemonium hectorite, based off of hectorite. Nothing crazy. It's a thing. Shea butter for skin conditioning um, and viscosity control. Then we get pheno... Fen Oh my god. Phenoxyethanol, which is a preservative for mostly fragrance. And it is also one of those not fantastics. 
there is definitely a high point of irritation, occupational hazards, and um, possible system toxicity. It's obviously it's restricted use, so it's like they're they're monitoring stuff, but it's just like it's it's high. Uh, in the gloss, you thought that you could escape the alcohol by putting on this nice, smooth gloss. No, there's denatured alcohol in it right after that again. And then caprolil. Oh, my God, I can't spell whatever. Caprolil glycol, which is a skin conditioning agent, which helps with moisture and preservatives. Um, phenol, phenoxyethanol is in a couple of these. Uh, most poign poignantly the JSC Valor Liquid Lip. It's pretty far down. It's used clearly as the one of the big fragrance things. And as well, caprolyglycol is in JSC. Um, but not so much the NYX. The NYX takes a very far departure from what Lip Sense has built up. You'll notice that there's not a lot of crossover when you look at it. And I did do the red for the gloss versus the color. So the gloss has a lot more over it because especially in the JSE, cause they don't work the same, but it was just like JSE is a long lasting liquid. So I'm gonna mention it. Um, Caprolil glycol also appears in instant hand sanitizer, but that's about it. And then we keep on moving. Uh, we go to PPG methyl glucose ether again and tosiferyl acetate, which is a vitamin E and acid compound for conditioning and antioxidant. This is in a lot of stuff. It is not very high. It does have a little bit of that, you know, contamination and all that alert allergens. Uh, vitamin E allergies are super common or sensitivity. So this doesn't surprise me. So I'm not like super like, oh my gosh, clutch your pearl. It happens and you can see it it is in this gloss it is in the nyx gloss um it appears in jeffree star and i believe yep it's in the purell and it's also in your butt wipes so it it comes across a lot and yes there are allergen issues um and it's high up it's pretty common but it's one of those things if you're aware that you are allergic to vitamin e it is listed there, so it's obviously it's its fancy name, but if you take a little quick Google search, um, if you've got a bad allergy to vitamin E, most people are pretty good at being vigilant because the rest of the world is not, and it sucks. I get that. I feel you. Uh, ethyl hexyl glycerin. It's a gly glycerol ether, which is preservative, skin conditioning, and deodorant. Most of this is a lot of skin conditioning. I get it. They're trying to keep things, I mean, I don't get it because a lot of it's just alcohol and really drying. Uh, we get into hexylene glycol and tin oxide and mica. Tin oxide works as the bulking agent, opacifying, viscosity control. Obviously, it's made of tin. Mica is a colorant. Weirdly enough, in the gloss for any of the colorants, they actually put the names. So I don't get it. But the only one that crosses over is a mica. Oh, wait, no, that's a lie. The only one that really two that real crossover is titanium dioxide and red seven lake so if you look at that and you look back at that you're like oh there's red seven lake um but i don't remember which kind of gloss this is i will admit i was i was a little unscientific and uh <laughs> grabbed that and was bad but yeah in the glosses i saw a trend where they expressly like said the names of them but in the color the thing with all of the color they did not which makes no sense to me um excellent and we've finished with lip sense so if we swing on over to nyx you'll notice the biggest difference is the top ingredient on both nyx and jse is isodotacane isodotacane kind of works the same as denatured alcohol um and it is a solvent I have it up here. It is also pretty low. Uh, and from my research, it is significantly less alcohol. -y. You'll notice the big thing is that there are not a lot of huge alcohol bits in these next two. Um, both of them also in the second place share trimethyl siloxisilicate. Um, 
which is skin conditioning. It's silicone based polymer. Uh, nylon 611 dimethicone copolymer, which is used for viscosity control and skin conditioning most of the time. The clay based thickener of uh, distir demonium hectorite, which also appears in the lore liquid lip. It's a thing. It's, it's common across all three of those, so it doesn't really surprise me. Uh, Laurelyl lysine, which is a lauric acid and lysine derivative for skin conditioning and viscosity controlling. A thing you will notice if you look into these is that so much of this that does the same job as a lot of these alcohols, um, they're, they're lysine, great. We love that protein. Lauric acids, a lot of natural acids are much better for your skin. Um, a thing I looked is that denatured alcohol versus most of these acids and even acetates, uh, as well as the isodotacane. Um, alcohol denatured, denatured alcohol disrupts the skin barrier and strips your natural oil. So that is why it is making it so dry. That is the top ingredient. And yes, some of these may cross over to other like dangerous things, but so does water. So that's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that their number one solvent is so drying and it strips the oils. Isodotocaine, I didn't find anything where it says like, yeah, it strips out the oils. Um, it's, it, it's just drying out your lips so that it sticks to it and it's kind of gross. But the other thing that I hear a lot is that to keep that color on all day is you have to keep applying the gloss. So what is the goddamn point of having this lasts for 18 hours liquid lip if I'm going to keep having to glob on the gloss when I could just go with a NYX liquid, uh, whatever this one is that does, you know, it's pretty long lasting, but it does transfer and it does smudge or try the shine loud or go for a similar thing to the velour liquid lip. Cause I'm not getting any more of those. Cause you know, yeah. <clears throat> and just reapplying as I need it. I don't understand. Like it's, it's supposed to last all day. Yeah. But then you keep having to do the same thing that you need to do with other lipsticks. So where'd that go? Also other lipsticks doesn't make my lips look like a tiny butthole and bleed because I already have that problem. So hell no. Back in. Macadamia seed oil. We love her. She's great. Skin conditioning, coriander oil for fragrance, yojoba for skin conditioning and viscosity, apricot oil for skin and fragrance, possibly a little bit. Apricot oil is very uh, little known about it. There's nothing super bad with it, but they didn't have a lot of information. Passion fruit oil for skin conditioning, a uh, C3045 alkyl dimethyl silyl polypropyl silisquic yoxane. Oh, I did it mostly. Uh, is a film forming silicone agent. Uh, sodium hyaluronate, which is the sodium from hyaluronic acid. Beautiful. We see silica come up. Uh, which we've talked about already. Again, not a great thing, but they're in both of them and it's much lower. Alumina and aluminum hydroxide. Um, alumina is for opacifying and anti-caking and aluminum for colorant, aluminum hydroxide. Uh, obviously, we know that aluminum has a uh, proven history of cancer issues. So it's not fantastic. And that is the downside. I will say it's very, very low on the list. And there are a lot of things with aluminum in them, which doesn't quite surprise me that much. Uh, aluminum hydroxide and alumina are seen with the nail polish. There's a lot of stuff in the nail polish. I did it so that we could look like to silamide and um, ferrocyanide, ferric ferrocyanide, which they also said were in some of the lip senses, which I didn't find, but I didn't look at them all. So I can't say whether or not they are in there. So like, I can officially prove that at least for the nude, lip sense is not as bad as putting on nail polish on your lips. And it also really isn't that close to just hand sanitizer with um, colorant in it because we have the 
C1030 acrylates, the crust polymers, uh, propanol, glycerin, ethyl alcohol. So there's a lot less crossover than you expect. And then of course, isopropyl alcohol, which only lasts in those two lines and are not in the lips at all. Um, anything not highlighted does not come across in anything else there very purposely except for uh i did stop at the hand sanitizer and the butt wipes because i got a little lazy the glycerin which crosses over but you'll notice that like the vitamin e compounds some fragrances water are really the big things from the lip family that cross over and then of course the colorant because you need to have colorant for nail polish if you're going to do colored nail polish um and silica, but there's not a whole lot of crossover between the lips and hand sanitizer, uh, brain, nail polish, butt wipes, not big. Uh, so yes, we know that aluminum hydroxide and alumina are great. We're aware of the, the risks of aluminum, but they are there and they're decently low. Um, I want to say other than the cancer risk, phenoxyethanol, tin tin oxide, not that terrible. Uh, there is a, there's skin absorption and there are risks of the cancer, but it's not the highest. Same with aluminum hydroxide, but we're already aware of those. Dimethicone which comes up in the gloss as well as in the JSC liquid lip. Um, is a little on that higher side where mostly it is immunotoxicity, allergies, and just possible organ system toxicity. It's not great. They limit it. It's pretty low on the line. Most of the stuff in here in all of these lipsticks, if you go in order, we'll go kind of in that same vein of this is the solvent da, 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 in the same order as lip sense. So they come across pretty similarly. Um, and then you have the propylene carbonate, which is not super high on the list either. I only brought up the ones that are like, hey, those, those point out a little bit. <laughs> um, but that's it. There's not a whole lot in the JSC that doesn't already cross over with um, what's in Lip Sense or what's in the Shine Loud. There's not a lot of Shine Loud that doesn't cross over into Lip Sense and what does is um, come across is the Illumina and the Aluminum for the most part. The Octinoxate uh, is for Oh my god. Ethyl hexyl metho methoxycinamate, which seems to be a, a different name for ox octanate. That one. Um, if it's not, go ahead and comment in the thing. I'm not a scientist. I do not know. But it is also a, a little, little dangerous. It's pretty far low, so there's not a whole lot of it but it's a thing to be aware of. Mostly immunotoxicity, um, skin absorption, endo endocrine disruption, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, sticking on the skin, basically, and allergies. So the big thing is there's not a lot of super dangerous stuff in at least Lip Sense Nude other than like physically damaging dryness to your lip hole like i'm just gonna say it wiping my face with my butt wipes leaves my lips less dry than i feel like the denatured alcohol alcohol heavy lip sense does and it, this thing where it's like detoxing your lips and it'll stop stinging after a while is a lot why would why, why would my lipstick sting my face so much that it 
burns more than like a lip plumper. I've used lip plumpers. They don't work on me, but I've used lip plumpers and it's tingly and it makes my lips numb, but it doesn't burn. Every review I have read is such a burn. And while there's nothing incredibly scary, there's, you know, there's some like, eh, it's not great in all three of these really. So it's like, I'm not here to judge them. It's like, oh, this one, Lip Sense has this incredibly scary ingredient that you should be aware of. Oh my God. Like, no, it's, it's, it's got the usual stuff, at least in this color. I can't promise that there's not propylene glycol in another Lip Sense gloss or another Lip Sense color and that there's not um, ferrocyanide in one of them because I did not have the time to look that much. There's a lot of options. I will say, they say they're wax-free. Uh, that is a lie. Some of their glosses do have beeswax in them. So, <laughs> but that is all I have for you. This is probably a very long video. I'm really sorry, but uh, non-scientist out.